Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm sharing with you my first impressions of the Monochrome Manga Club series reads for July. The Monochrome Manga Club is my in real life manga club where I host a club at our local Barnes Noble and every month we read two first in a series reads and we are doing two series reads as well. So the titles that we read in the month of July was Volume 1 of Hatsuharu. This is by Shizuki Fujisawa, published by Yen Press, rated teen. And then we read Volume 1 of Penguin and House by Akiho Ieda, published by Kodansha, rated all ages. Our two series reads were Volume 4 of Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon by Naoko Takeuchi, um, this is Rated Teen, published by Kodansha, and we started a new series read. So our new series read was Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. So we read volumes one and two. This one is by Kyoharu Gotoge, published by Viz, Rated Teen. So in this video, because I'm doing first impressions only, I'm only going to be talking about Hatsuharu, Penguin and House, and Demon Slayer since we are at the beginning. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on Sailor Moon, you can check out my DSIS 19 diaries, which will be posted on Wednesday, July 27th. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to start off with Hatsuharu. So this is a high school romance story where our main character is our guy here on the cover uh, his name is Kai, and he is a playboy. He dates lots of girls, and he doesn't really have lasting relationships um, with the people that he dates. And then he comes across a girl um, that he's gone to school with for a bit, um, since elementary school at least, and she knocks his lights out. From there, he starts to kind of think about her all the time <laughs> and then he realizes that maybe his thoughts maybe his feelings for her are different from the feelings that he's had for other girls and so this volume kind of follows him having encounters with this girl that are not so pleasant and then trying to navigate what he's feeling and figuring out that you know maybe this time it's different for him. I have been really interested in this series for a really long time and so I took the opportunity to pull it up as a, as a selection for the club since I do run the club. I do choose the selections and so I thought you know what let's just throw it in. It was available which is another reason why um, I chose it because we've been having issues with availability for manga club selection so this one was available to bring into the store and I hadn't started collecting it already so it gave me a good excuse to collect it and so yeah I actually really enjoyed this one for whatever reason I did not realize that the main character was the guy and so I think that gives it a bit of a different feel the mangaka does have notes in here stating that when they came up with the story, the main character was actually the female, but the editor or something um, decided to, or suggested that the main character should be the guy instead. And I'm finding that perspective to be interesting. There is a little bit of a student-teacher type romance. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's an actual like romance. It's like a one of the students is like infatuated with the teacher, I would say, has feelings for the teacher, but you don't see that the teacher reciprocates that. Um, there is a bit of a backstory with those two characters in more like a brotherly, sisterly type interactions. So I'm thinking that whole thing's gonna go out the window though, just thinking about how series like these normally go. So while it is a little bit uncomfortable that whole like storyline that's not like the main focus and so like I said I do think that 
whole thing is going to go out the window anyway and that we're going to be focusing on our main character here and his love interest um, but I'm interested to see how this series continues because I did think this was a very entertaining read and I'm definitely intrigued um, I do love the art style this type of art style is right down my alley and so, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading more of this. And so that was very, very entertaining. I'm glad that I did finally pick that one up. Then we moved on to Penguin and House by Kiho Ieda. This is about a penguin who lives with his keeper. Um, I don't remember. Hayakawa? Yeah, I think the keeper's name is Hayakawa. And we basically get little vignettes about the penguin going throughout his day and doing things. Um, and his interactions with Hayakawa. So the penguin in the story is very cute. Very, very cute. The penguin is also very loving. Um, the penguin does lots of things for Hayakawa. Hayakawa is a jerk. <laughs> I do not like Hayakawa. Uh, he's just... I don't know if it's just because of his age or if he's just oblivious, but... Our penguin will go out of his way to, like, do things for Hayakawa, and Hayakawa just, like, doesn't think when he talks to the penguin. Like, for example, the penguin will, like, I'm going to try not to be spoiling. The penguin will, like, do something that took him all day and a lot of thought to do, and then Hayakawa will you know, come home, be surprised, but then is like, okay, well, thanks for that, but I'm tired, I'm going to sleep. Like, it's very, very ungrateful, very, very cold. I feel like I don't see him, like, being loving to our penguin as a pet either. Um... Yeah, this is definitely not like a man and his cat. If you go into this thinking this is going to be like one of those stories where you have a pet owner and the pet owner like dotes on their pet and loves them and cuddles with them, this is not that story. Um, this is a lot of the penguin just being so thoughtful and doing lots of things for Hayakawa and then the penguin just not getting any kind of praise or affection or anything like that. I am very, <laughs> I'm very sad about that. I really thought this was going to be more like a man and his cat where we're not like having like emotional stories, but like, that we're going to see a pet owner and their pet and their relationship and how, you know, loving that can be and that this is not that. <laughs> and I know the back of this says um, this has an adorable slice. It's an adorable slice of life with pancakes and laughter. There are definitely pancakes. One of the stories in here definitely deals with pancakes. Um, we meet um, one of Hayakawa's friends, and even he is more loving and doting on our penguin than Hayakawa is. There's a story where we meet another penguin and their keeper, and it happens to be a female penguin. And that was super cute. But again, Hayakawa is just, he's a jerk. <laughs> I don't like him. So that's really putting a damper on this series for me. Because as much as I enjoy our penguin and seeing all of the thought and care that the penguin puts into these things for Hayakawa, the way Hayakawa reacts to those things is not loving. It's not thankful. It's very cold. I don't know. I <laughs> Maybe I'm just reading this differently. Maybe it's because I was just expecting something else. But to me, I feel like our penguin is in an abusive relationship almost. Um, yeah, I, I wish Hayakawa would be more loving. But 
again, I don't know if it's just because of his age or if he's just really oblivious, but I do not like how he treats the penguin. So it's putting a damper on this series for me. I do have two more volumes in my collection on this. I will read through those because I do have them. But this was not as enjoyable as I thought it was going to be. So unfortunately, um, while I did find this entertaining and I do like the penguin as our main character, I do not like Hayakawa. In fact, I kind of wish the penguin had lived with Hayakawa's friend instead because I enjoy him a lot better. But yeah. Um... I'm a bit disappointed because I was hoping for something a little bit more heartwarming. At least a few heartwarming moments. And I'm definitely getting that from the Penguin, but I'm not getting that from Hayakawa at all. So that was a bit of a letdown for me. So the last thing I'm going to talk about today is our beginning of Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. So we're reading two volumes a month. Um, of Demon Slayer. So if you'd like to read along with us, definitely join in because we just started this one. Um, this is a rather long series, but it was unanimously voted on by our Manga Club members to be our next series read. So we're reading two volumes a month. This is going to take us about a year to read. This is a very hyped series. I will tell you that I was very, very concerned about going into this because normally with hyped titles I do not enjoy them as much as everybody else does and to an extent that's kind of how I still feel but I did enjoy this a lot more than I thought I was going to so this is a historical supernatural novel about our main character Tanjiro who is the boy here on the cover he is from a pretty large family a single parent family he goes off to try to sell some charcoal um to try to bring in some money so that his family can have a nice holiday. And when he returns from doing that, he finds his family has been completely slaughtered. Uh, everybody is very cold to the touch except for his sister, who is this one here on the cover. Not Naruko, I think her name is. Nezuko. Nezuko, I'm sorry. She is still warm. So he grabs her up and starts running to the nearest village, which is not very close. And while he is running with her on his back, she attacks him. Turns out she has been turned into a demon. And so while he's trying to like stave her off, he sees that she recognizes him. There's a part of her that still recognize him so not all is lost she hasn't been overcome by the demon inside and while they're kind of figuring this out together uh, they come across a demon slayer who's trying to kill her because obviously she's a demon she's going to have bloodlust she's going to kill innocent people and he needs to exterminate her so Tanjiro is trying to tell him, no, you know, she is in there. She recognizes me. She stopped attacking me. You know, she's not like the demons that you normally go after. And while fighting off this demon slayer, trying to tell him, please do not kill my sister, they both get knocked out, um, Nezuko and Tanjiro. When they come to, Nezuko has this piece of bamboo or something in her mouth. And now Tanjiro decides that he wants to become a demon slayer so that he can go after the person who turned his sister into a demon and slaughtered his family. And so I am finding that this series, while it is interesting, there is a bit of a discrepancy or in my head. I would say a discrepancy in my head as far as the time lapses go with the series. It's not very well told, like, how much time has gone by. There were several times where I was like, wait, how many years has gone by? Because it doesn't seem like that with how things are told in the story. That being said, I did find things that happened in the story very interesting. If you have seen the game trailer for the um, game that's 
out based on this series. The trailer covers things that happen in volume two. So all of that was very familiar to me because I have watched the video game trailer. We were watching it because we were thinking about purchasing the game, but my daughter decided that she could pass. Um, but yeah, I did find it interesting. I'm not quite sure about this series yet. It is it is interesting. I did enjoy what I've read. It's not the greatest story that I've read so far. Definitely not living up to the hype from what I can tell. Um, but this is just the beginning. I presume there's going to be a lot more stuff. Um, and we're at the beginning here where Tanjiro's just coming into his Demon Slayer abilities. So there's that also. There are some things I have a lot of questions about. So I'm looking forward to getting more into this series. And kind of uncovering the answers to those questions. Uh, but I do like the art style. The action scenes are very easy to interpret for me. I know I've talked a lot about the fact that sometimes when I'm reading scenes that are full of action it's hard for me to figure out what's going on in those scenes but with this one I'm not having that issue which is good. I do get a little bit of an Inuyasha type vibe with the demons but yeah I do enjoy it so far. I'm pleasantly surprised so I don't know if we're going to be doing a read a watch along with this, my daughter and I. We kind of talked about whether or not we're going to watch the anime episodes as we read this through with the manga club. But I kind of feel like because the volumes are so spaced out, we're going to have to wait a lot in between the readings because I don't want to get ahead of where we're reading for the series reads um, with the club members. So I don't think we're going to be watching the anime while we're reading this, but we're probably going to watch the anime after we finish. So my brother really loves this anime. Um, in fact, he was the first person who talked to me about this series. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed what I read so far. I was pleasantly surprised. I'm looking forward to more. So that's everything we read in the month of... July other than the Sailor Moon but like I said I'll talk about Sailor Moon in my Deuces 19 Diaries video which will post on the 27th so if you're interested in my thoughts on Sailor Moon definitely check out my Deuces 19 Diaries video but before I let you go I want to let you know what we will be reading for August so in August we will be reading volume one of Kami-sama Kiss this is a supernatural romance I believe um, it says it's a divine comedy so there's some comedy in here I know this is a classic, but it was voted on by, or suggested, by one of the Manga Club members um, to read, and she really wanted to read this one. So I decided to go ahead and add it to our roster for August. I'm looking forward to that one because I've heard mention of it a lot, um, and I, the art style looks like it's right down my alley, and the storyline sounds like it's going to be down my alley as well because I do like these supernatural type stories. So definitely looking forward to that. We're going to be reading volume one of Beauty and the Beast of Paradise Lost by Kaori Yuki. This is published by Kodansha rated older teen. Kamisama Kiss is rated by Viz rated teen. Um, this is a gothic retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I absolutely love Kaori Yuki's art style and I enjoyed what I've read of their work so far. So I'm looking forward to getting into this one. So those are our two first in the series reads. We will be continuing our series reads of Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba with volumes 3 and 4. And we will also be continuing our series read of Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon with the Eternal Edition volume 5. So let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of these titles and what you thought of them. Will you be joining in on the August reads for the Manga Club? If nothing else, you would just like to let me know that you are here. If you could leave me a dog emoji down in the comments below, that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out, and that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye!